Bob asks, miners spending block rewards and mining fees. Am I correct in understanding that miners cannot spend the block reward until after a hundred blocks have been mined? If so, is there a waiting period before a miner can spend the mining fees, or can they spend them earlier? Uh, Bob, you're correct. The Coinbase transaction, which contains both the blocks subsidy, which is the twelve and a half new bitcoins at the current rates, and the fees, it's all in one transaction, the Coinbase transaction, cannot be spent for a hundred blocks after it's mined. And this is to protect against miners gaming the system with deep reorganizations. And in order to do that, they can't actually spend the rewards until a hundred blocks have passed, at which point um, you have a lot more proof of work piled on top of that chain, and it's much more difficult to reorganize it because you don't want miners spending the rewards and then have the chain reorganized. That would cause havoc in Bitcoin. So, um, both the subsidy and the fees, which are in the same Coinbase transaction. If you look at the uh, at a transaction or a block today, and you look at the first transaction, which is called the Coinbase transaction, you will see that it's not 12.5 Bitcoin. It's more, and the amount above 12.5 Bitcoin is the sum of all of the fees remaining in the block. Um, and you can check the math if you want. Sit down and add up all of the fees in all of the transactions, and see if it's the same as the difference between the the Coinbase transaction amount and the twelve and a half Bitcoin that is the block subsidy at present. You'll see that it is exactly the same or less. Um, you can have a Coinbase transaction that earns less but not more. So. Um, yeah, so it's one transaction. Fees and block subsidy are in the same transaction, and it's the transaction itself, the Coinbase transaction, that cannot be spent for a hundred blocks. That makes attacks against the chain of reorganizations enormously risky for miners because they may never ever get that um, fee. If all the miners try to go back to the Genesis block, how much energy do they need to consume in order to change it? The simple answer is the same amount of energy that was used to mine everything in the first place. That's not actually correct. And the reason it's not actually correct is because the equipment that was used to mine the early blocks um, was much less efficient than the equipment that is used today. So instead of um, taking um, the same amount of energy is going to be a smaller percentage of energy than the, than the amount of energy that was used in the first place. And while it will be done a lot faster because there's much more hashing power available today, um, the faster uh, hashing won't be uh, that much more efficient in terms of energy used because Faster hashing means more energy is being used. So, in fact, the amount of energy that would need to be consumed in order to change the blockchain all the way back to the Genesis block is a big chunk of all of the energy that was already used to mine it in the first place. Uh, that's one of the necessary security mechanisms that makes 51% attacks difficult, expensive, and unsustainable, and also that makes immutability strong in a proof-of-work system. You mentioned something about immutability of the whole chain being impossible to counterfeit or change because of the sheer volume of work with proof-of-work. Can we maintain proof-of-work with the current energy demands that it needs, or do we need to move to proof-of-stake and sacrifice this immutability in some sense? Can we sustain proof of work, or do we move to proof of stake? Um, if you try to move to proof of stake, only a few will follow you. And so these types of fundamental principled decisions no longer result in A or B. They result in A and B through the mechanism of a fork, which means there will always be a proof of work network as long as I'm running it. Right? I have a choice as one individual to continue to run it. If there's two of us, better. If there's two million of us, great. If it's just me in my basement, I'm the last die-hard supporter of proof of work. I've been in that position before. I've been called weird. It's okay by me. The interesting thing about crypto is that you don't have to make that choice. And in fact, in the absence of overwhelming support to move to something new, 
Proof of work preserves the status quo, strongly preserves the status quo by forcing a fork, which means we're not going to leave proof of work. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. It's never going to happen. It might become very expensive to run. And in that case, people will turn off their equipment, the difficulty will go down, and then it will no longer be too expensive to run. It's a dynamic algorithm. How much energy are we using right now? We're using exactly the right amount of energy. How do I know? Because the market has told me so. There are two ways to make decisions in this world. One is to aggregate all of the information available to the market through the power of price. And the other one is to elect someone to make the decision for you. We already have systems where you can elect someone to make the decision for you. This is a market-based system. And as long as it exists as a market-based system, it will aggregate all of the profit and loss decisions made by all of the participating miners and say, how much is the right amount of proof of work? The current amount of proof of work is the right amount of proof of work, by definition, because the market said so. Great, great question to end on. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.